Not long ago, Russian energy giant Novatek announced that it will order 20 CGT 25D power generation gas turbines from China's China Shipbuilding Group for its LNG 2 LNG project in the Arctic. Earlier, RIA Novosti reported that by the end of 2022, the construction of the Arctic LNG 2 project was 73% complete, with the first production line 95% complete. In addition, the project in the Murmansk region has completed the assembly of the production line modules and conducted basic gravity hydraulic tests on the first line, while the gravity structure platform for the second line has completed concrete work and is currently undergoing mechanical equipment assembly under the joint embargo of Europe and the United States. Russia also began close cooperation with China, and Russia ordered 20 units in one breath, which became the largest order ever for. The export of Chinese gas turbine equipment, which also means the expansion of China's high-end equipment overseas market, Russia has always regarded itself as China's teacher, especially in the production and research and development of heavy high-end equipment, preferring to purchase equipment from European and American countries at high prices, rather than cooperate with China. So why put down its face this time and buy Chinese high-end equipment? Welcome to my channel, in today's video, I will share my views with you, if you have information to share on this topic, welcome to tell me in the comments section, you can also send me an email. Many viewers may not be aware of Russia's Arctic LNG-2 project, also known as Arctic LNG-2, which is a large-scale energy project involving the extraction and liquefaction of natural gas. It is a large-scale energy project involving the extraction and liquefaction of natural gas. The goal of the project is to extract and produce natural gas resources from the Russian Arctic and export them to international markets in the form of liquefied natural gas (LNG). The project has a projected capacity of nearly 20 million tons of LNG per year, and three LNG production lines are planned for the Tozelka Peninsula, each including an extraction and liquefaction plant. The gas will be piped from nearby fields to these plants, where it will be processed and then cooled into liquid form. The project is seen as an important step toward Russia becoming one of the world's largest LNG producers. It will help Russia harness its abundant Arctic energy resources and meet the growing global demand for clean energy, according to Rosatom News, Russian energy giant Novatek will buy 20 CGT 25D units from China precisely for this project. The reason why Russia signed this order is actually quite simple. After the Russia-Ukraine war, Europe and the United States imposed comprehensive sanctions on Russia, and the road of buying Western gas turbine equipment was no longer viable for Russia, so it had no choice but to give up. The Chinese CGT-25D, a version of the Chinese GT-25000 heavy-duty gas turbine for power generation, was tested in the far eastern Arctic climate a few years ago and naturally became the first choice. The GT-25000 is also the power system for the Chinese Navy 052D guided missile destroyer and 055 large missile destroyer. The Chinese GT-25000 gas turbine is the predecessor of the Ukrainian UGT-25000, which was developed from the Soviet Union's third-generation naval combustion engine, the UGT-15000. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Ukraine inherited the Soviet Union's third-generation naval combustion engine UGT-15000, which was in an embarrassing state of uselessness due to Ukraine's long-term sluggish economic development and no plans to build large surface ships. At this time, the construction of China's third-generation destroyer was on the agenda but the development of domestic gas turbines could not keep up with the construction plan of the ship. In this case, China decided to introduce the UGT-25000 gas turbine, then digest and absorb it, realize localization, and then perfect and improve it. Now, Russia is importing from China, so you can't help but sigh. In 1993, China and Ukraine signed the UGT-25000 gas turbine production license and single-unit sales contract, which made China enter the top stream of gas turbines, and the 20 units ordered by Gazprom now will be the improved version of GT-25000.In fact, this is the first time. Russia purchases the GT-25000 gas turbine produced in China, 
and the painful and helpless behind the sanctions by Europe and the United States, only Russia can experience the pain and frustration behind the sanctions imposed by Europe and the United States. Russia is a country that attaches great importance to the development of heavy industry, the Russian gas turbine industry. How to fall to the point that today this kind of sanctions by Europe and the United States have to seek large-scale imports from China? In fact, the problem is simply that Russia's long-term market underinvestment, the lack of the necessary national strategic support, and finally the formation of the build is better than buy, buy is better than rent thinking, this thinking has destroyed the Russian independent gas turbine industry. The Soviet Union had also accumulated a lot of technology and Products for Russia, but under the impact of foreign brands, the Russian Gas Turbine Special Design Bureau was gradually controlled by the West, and Russia's gas turbine development and improvement program was stopped, and many promising advanced projects were restricted in development, and many capable technicians were lost. China, on the other hand, insists on the road to autonomy in gas turbines. And after the introduction of Ukrainian technology, has carried out long-term stable resource. Investment, constantly improved the iterative process and constantly corrected problems, finally becoming an advanced power system on the road to localization. This also shows that in recent years, China's industrialization process is developing in leaps and bounds, Western countries are also very powerful combustion engine technology, just do not sell to Russia, while Chinese technology is not inferior to the West, which is the reason why Russia purchases Chinese combustion engines.so. What are the consequences of a country's industry that goes into decline? For the kind of country with a relatively small population and land area, it is fine to take any route, as long as it has its own unique advantages in one or two industries, the livelihood of millions of people will not be a problem, but for the kind of countries with large populations, it is necessary to work on modernizing industries in various sectors, because there is no industry in the world that can currently accommodate the volume of several hundred million people. And once a large country achieves full industrialization, the entire vast social system will be extremely dependent. On this efficient industrial system the social system of a large industrial country is like a tall building, in which the pillar is the developed modern industrial system, and the decline of industry is equivalent to the decay of the pillar, Americans are very anxious about the decline of their industry right now. And many elites in the United States have gone so far as to say that the specific reason for the decline of American industry is that China is developing too well and stealing their industries. Therefore, the solution is to stop China's development, and then a big, industrial return, objectively speaking, the lower share of industry in the United States is mainly due to the fact that the authorities have invested too much in the financial sector, hurting other sectors, especially industry. A strong dollar is, in fact, also detrimental to the long-term development of the country's industrial goods, Biden in the previous signing of the CHIP Act has made an explanation. The U.S. share of the global semiconductor market once reached 40 percent, now down to 10 percent, in order to strengthen control of the market, so the U.S. to encourage long-term investment in the field of semiconductors through the CHIP Act. It is clear that the United States now want to revitalize the country's efforts to revitalize modern industry, has been accumulating heavy. Because the development of industrialization, and not to build a few factories can save over, he needs is a comprehensive upgrade of infrastructure and business environment. Even if the United States fully upgraded domestic capital in the financial services industry for a long time, the industry may not be interested in, so the decline of industrialization will not be avoided although the US industry is in rapid decline, but thanks to the long-term accumulation, they still lead the world in science and technology.as for the degradation of the Russian industry. The original enterprises with the ability to do so, after years of desolation, are ultimately no equipment, no workers, no capacity because of the reduction of production shutdown. Now, want to go to restore, the difficulties are great, although over the years to restore some capacity, but the quality and quantity of production has been much less than before, so some high standard gas turbines need to be imported from abroad, China, on the other hand, has built a full set of modern production capacities because of its national strategy.
in comparison with which Russian companies are naturally not competitive. The West's harsh sanctions against Russia have turned its attention to China, which will not only help Russia achieve energy transition, but will also push the level of economic cooperation between Russia and China even further. Whether two countries can trust each other and strengthen cooperation, fundamentally or depends on the relationship between the interests of both sides, when the interests of cooperation is greater than non-cooperation, it is natural to feel at ease cooperation, but if you have other options at hand, the other side will also be worried that you change the door at any time. China and Russia are big countries, in normal circumstances will have a lot of options, so ordinary cooperation is no problem, but to become a life-and-death friendship is not so easy. However, in the current situation, both countries are out of too many options, Russia is rich in energy, but under the sanctions from Europe and the United States, its market share has declined and its revenue has decreased, which is simply adding to the already weak economy of Russia, China, on the other hand is a big manufacturing country that needs a lot of energy, and for Russia, China is a huge market, and China can bring cheap goods to Russia. China and Russia have strong complementarity in developing their economies, and cooperation between the two sides is simply a match made in heaven, the US is also riding a tiger right now, and aid to Ukraine is a huge expense, but that's just one of the expenses, along with manufacturing repatriation subsidies, pension guarantees, subsidies for low-income people, and funding for the Chinese siege, etc. The U.S. has so much to do that it is really unlikely that it can do it all at the same time, the U.S. appears to have absolute strength, but is now clearly stretched to the limit. The U.S. also realizes that the Russia-Ukraine war has exceeded initial expectations, and now that it is caught in the mud like this, the U.S. will become increasingly cautious. The possibility of the U.S. adventurous use of the Ukrainian model in the Taiwan Strait will be significantly reduced. Not only that, the U.S. may also have to beg China instead of creating disputes every day, and perhaps Blinken's recent visit to China is also a signal the international situation is changing rapidly. Will Russia be able to achieve its strategic goals in the battle of multiple forces, including China, the United States and Russia? For China, is this a strategic opportunity? All these are yet to be verified by time. Welcome to Forward, leave comments and share your views with me, and we will see you in the next episode.